The Acolyte All Along Episode 2, where Agatha Harkness gets a visit from Mother Anasea all the way from the Star Wars galaxy, who yet again turns into a black demonic smoke. I don't know when Marvel started to copy Lucasfilm's homework, but it probably wasn't a good idea to choose the $180 million failure to copy from. It was an even worse idea to copy their marketing strategy, but Disney have not been known for their good ideas recently. I'm told, I hear, I've seen the first episode, but Agatha is the gayest Marvel project yet. Do you agree? I, it better be, because that's, that's what I signed up for. Um, I think it is. I'm skipping the spoiler-free section of this review because I want to save time and I can't imagine why you would even care about spoilers, but if you do, here's your spoiler warning. I'd rate this episode about a 2 out of 10. There were a few lines here and there that I liked, a couple of jokes that I smiled at, and I think it did a decent job of making the villains creepy at the end of the episode, but beyond that, there's really not much I enjoyed. Agatha is the most unlikable character I've seen in ages. Her teenage male fangirl is a pathetic fool who the show just loves to humiliate, and the show just goes out of its way to push anti-morality at every turn. Oh, and it doesn't even remotely appeal to the target audience of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a match made in hell. So we start where the last episode left off in the wake of Agatha's fight with her former lover, and the boy who's definitely not Wanda's son decides to try his hand at some Australian breakdancing. I don't know where you heard about the road. Books, the ballad, legend. I've got to say, he could really go far in the sport. Next Olympic athlete right there. But he asks Agatha to take him to the Witch's Road, some mythical place where witches go to be tested and prove themselves worthy of their witchcraft abilities. The road will give you the thing you want the most. A quality plot? A likable protagonist? A show that actually appeals to its correct target audience? The road promises that what's missing awaits you at its end. Power is what I'm missing. Oh, it's always power, isn't it? Nobody who craves power has ever been the good guy. Oh, but it's a show about witches. Why would you expect them to be good people? I wouldn't, but why is Hollywood so obsessed with writing about witches and evil and anti-morality? Why do all these writers think that power is the only motive that exists? Sure says something about them and their mentality, I think, doesn't it? My name is... <laughs> Wanda's son. It's going to be funny if that's not actually Wanda's son and I end up looking like a complete idiot, but I think I heard they literally spoiled their own surprise with the trailer subtitles, just like they did with the Acolyte, actually. Hilarious how incompetent these people are. What do you know about covens? They're the truest form of sisterhood. So you'll fit right in then, won't you? But also, the truest form of sisterhood? What a disgrace. Let's take something wholesome and then corrupt it and then call it the purest form. Evil. Oh, what a big reveal! The people of Westview hate Wanda! What a surprise! Are we supposed to feel bad for her after she enslaved them all in her mental prison and forced them to play out parts in her delusional fantasy like unwitting actors in a twisted show? I did think for the briefest of moments that maybe Agatha was feeling bad about manipulating Wanda into doing that, but then she spits on the ground in disgust. Agatha, who is the only one worse than Wanda. Literally any other character could have done that and I would have been okay with it, but not the witch who is at least as much to blame as Wanda is. Clearly self-awareness is not one of Agatha's strong suits. So now might be a good time to play these clips from the show's promotional interviews. The show has been described to me as the gayest Marvel project to date. Do you agree? I, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. I think witches are queer inherently just because we are outcast and set aside for many reasons. But yes, it will be a gay explosion by the end. Sorry. He worries. Yes, let's go. I'm so excited for the gayest Marvel, Slay Queen. This marketing tactic went so well for Acolyte. I just can't wait to watch the show follow the same trajectory. Oh, well... I wish I could say I was surprised. Where do we just find a coven? Wherever you are, a coven there shall be. That's beautiful. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not. Based Agatha. I don't want to say great minds think alike because Agatha is so dumb she had to write out the dark hold last episode, but at least she had one good line here. And actually, I quite like this little exchange here too, after this idiot asks her to jot down the covenstead rule that she just quoted to him. Can you actually jot that down for me? There's a pen in the glove compartment. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right. Oh, did you want me to take that? You know, it's, it's, I'll remember it. 
Again, Agatha does almost the exact thing that I would have done, or I guess I probably wouldn't have actually done it because I'm not a complete prick, but it certainly would have crossed my mind to just toss the book out the window. So the show has them then visit a psychic who is actually a real witch, and it plays it off like it's fiction, but honestly, that's probably exactly what real psychics are. Either con artists making things up and scamming people, or real witches. Either way, I'd recommend steering well clear of them. Witches like you were the reason people think we poison apples and steal children and eat babies. Babies are delicious. Wow, it's almost like I predicted the future back in my episode 1 review. What will they do next to make us despise watching her even more? Maybe have her kick a dog or smother a baby? I scripted that before I had watched this second episode, but I never actually expected them to go there. Good grief. What am I even supposed to make of that line? Like, why would you put that into the show? Either you're telling me that your main character eats babies, which makes her so much more evil than I could possibly have imagined, or you're telling me that you, the writer, think that's funny to joke about. Of course, you are free to joke about whatever you want, but I'm also free to make a value judgment on the quality of your character based on the kinds of jokes that you make. And there's no kind way for me to tell you what I think of you after I heard a line like that. You know what's the strangest part about Marvel and Star Wars having such an aversion to writing straight men these days? There's no straight men left in their stories to humiliate, so then they have to turn to humiliating the gay men instead. Sounds problematic, right? Like, maybe you're a gay guy and you don't like seeing your kind portrayed as pathetic, incompetent, spineless fools. Well, bad luck. Disney doesn't care. They hate men more than they love gay people, so you're just gonna have to suck it up and accept that characters like this are the best representation you're going to get from Disney. Who is this child? I'm My pet. This is my pet. Say hi, pet. Hi. Just like the gay Padawan and the Acolyte, these shows hate you. All that power is yours to keep. There it is again. The show tries to depict this psychic as a good witch. She's not like Agatha. She doesn't give witches a bad name. All she does is predict tragedy when she's being persecuted for it for years. She's altruistic and wait, never mind. No, the show clearly shows that she too is drawn in by the promise of power. Granted, she does still say no, but it seems like that comes more from a mistrust of Agatha than anything else. She definitely looked like she wanted that power. Evil. Power for the sake of power is not a virtuous thing to pursue. It never is. So she does a spell and it gives them a list of four names of people to join Agatha's coven. She says, leave me out of it, but then Agatha reads the list and one of the four names is the psychic's name. How that happened, I have no idea, but obviously this lady's mind is made up, so you wouldn't expect something like this to convince her, wait, never mind, that's enough to change her mind. Guess that power really was tempting after all, huh? What a joke. Okay, so this next witch they find is in like a scented candle place selling apparently edible candles? Is that a thing? Like, it could well be, I honestly would have no idea. Scented candles don't even exist in my world, but it sounds very weird. I would, however, like to thank this show for giving me a quick list of all the places that I should absolutely avoid if I don't want any association with witchcraft. First, it was the psychic. That one was obvious. But now it's a lady selling candles. What's next, a yoga instructor? Again, though, there is the occasional line of comedy that actually gets a laugh out of me. God, Agatha, I haven't seen you since I made a really pointed effort to never run into you again. Love how everyone in this show except Wakan hates Agatha and wants nothing to do with her. Wonder why? Might have something to do with the fact that she's the most fundamentally unlikable person ever. Also, if you're making a really pointed effort not to run into her again, why the heck are you living within like three miles of her? You'd chew off your own acrylics to get back into the club. I don't want to keep stealing Disparu's lines, but... All that runs through my head when I hear dialogue like that is his voice saying, this really wasn't made for me. Technically, it's not a badly written line, especially considering who Agatha is talking to, but it really reminds me that it was written by a middle-aged upper-class woman for middle-aged upper-class women. You know, the least likely people to be Marvel fans. Who is this? Another child sacrifice? Again with these jokes, if you keep talking about child sacrifice and eating babies, I'm going to start believing you. And by the way, Agatha responded to this in a way that made it seem like she actually has done child sacrifice before. Why are we watching such evil characters? If the end of this show isn't Doctor Strange showing up to put down every last one of these witches like he's Geralt of Rivia, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. If you're going to depict such evil, you have to show them getting what's coming to them. That was one of the biggest issues with the Acolyte. Evil went unpunished while good was snuffed out and demonized. Anti-morality. Also, why the heck isn't Wakan more alarmed by such a casual comment that the witch is making about, oh, are you just another human sacrifice, another child sacrifice? Shouldn't there be warning bells going off in his head? Is he really that dumb? 
but it costs more than I make in a whole summer at the Hokey Pokey Bowl. I don't want to ever hear those words paired together again. Again, I liked Agatha's response here. See, you can make a character who is grumpy or snarky, but do it in a still enjoyable way, and occasionally that's what this show manages to do with Agatha. But for every one line like that, there are countless others where she is genuinely just such an absolutely awful, obnoxious bitch. They overplayed it way too much and made her a caricature instead of keeping it more believable and enjoyable. We get an incredibly rushed and ridiculous scene of them getting this other witch fired. Sir, this woman just assaulted my nephew. Did you just tackle a teenager? Yeah, I saw them lift something. No, he didn't touch anything. Didn't Check his me. pocket. You're fired. And again, this is the kind of person that Agatha is. She's just got an innocent lady fired from her job to use it as a manipulation tactic. And I'm hesitant to describe this lady as innocent because she is still a witch, but as far as the show has stated so far, she's just the daughter of a witch, so she herself may not be evil. Either way, Agatha just got her unjustly fired because that's what good protagonists do or something. And if that wasn't enough, she then decides to physically assault two random dudes for no reason. This is entertainment! I love watching evil people doing evil things! That's why I watch the Marvel Superhero Universe! There once was a time when superhero shows were about superheroes, not evil pieces of garbage. And she gets her coven together and they start singing their song to summon the witch's road or whatever the heck. And we've got a song, yes, a ballad, which is supposed to have like 40 million streams or something stupid. I think it's referenced in the show. It's just a stupid song. Uh, 40 million copies worldwide, beg to differ. Most unrealistic part of this show so far is that anybody voluntarily listened to this song even once, let alone 40 million people or 40 million times. And then the evil seven witches, whatever they are, Salem Seven or something, show up because they were referenced in episode one and whatever, I don't care. <sighs> they look like this though. Hang on a minute, no, I've seen her before. Power of one. Oh no. The power of two. Please no. The power of many. I thought I'd seen the last of you. Please stop it. For real though, at least the song in this show isn't as bad as that one in terms of songwriting. I almost feel like it's kind of impressive. It has like multiple verses and a chorus. I went to way too much effort for this. So maybe Mother Anasea is here to learn a better song to teach to her next coven of space lesbians. The road is mild and wicked, winding through the world. Well, the frog is right and all that's bad is good. Sounds like Hollywood to me. I genuinely can't believe these are actual lyrics from this song. This show just revels in its own evil. I actually think it might be more twisted than The Acolyte was. Like, I'm not even joking. I just feel unclean watching this nonsense. Wait, at this point, I think we might genuinely have reached the point of equal cringe to The Acolyte. At least the power of one was short. This one's far more creative, true, but it absolutely outstays its welcome and the longer it runs the worse it gets it's just ridiculous and then it ends with follow me my friend to glory in the end evil evil and that's really my question with shows like this one why are we celebrating evil why are we following evil characters are we meant to be rooting for them to succeed because i certainly was not i would have been completely okay with the bad guys showing up and killing them all right here no 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 not those bad guys these bad guys. It's confusing, I know, when nobody in your show has anything even remotely resembling morals or a conscience, but in future, I'll try to distinguish better between the bad guys and the bad, bad guys. And speaking of the bad, bad guys, I will admit that this show did a pretty good job of making the Salem 7 creepy as hell. That part, at least, was competently done. It doesn't remotely interest me, and I can't say I'm even curious to find out more about them, but at least they didn't come across like an absolute meme like the witches in the Acolyte did. And while we're on the topic of the Acolyte comparisons, I don't think that this show is actually quite as low quality as the Acolyte. It might be more evil, I guess time will tell on that, but the quality of writing is, I think, a little higher. Unlike the Acolyte, the main characters so far have been at least moderately consistent in personality and motive, so that's a massive step up, and the plot hasn't been driven by quite so many contrivances. But at the end of the day, I still can't really find very much that I was actually interested in or anything that actually was done well in this show, and I still have no idea why this show was even made at all. It doesn't remotely appeal to the Marvel audience, and it's a spin-off of a spin-off that nobody asked for. That doesn't necessarily mean it's impossible for it to be good, but it's certainly a massive handicap from which to start the show. Ultimately, I think it was probably only made as a vessel from which to push evil Hollywood anti-morality and subvert the good morals that the superhero genre used to be well known for. What a terrible motive for creating a piece of art. 
So those are my thoughts on Agatha All Along Episode 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you want to, subscribe at your own risk, and until next time, keep your pen on the paper and your sword in the scabbard.